Okay, here we're going to take a brief overview of the influence of population density. The example image here, we see a very densely packed population, or population of high density. So we have two main uh, ways to influence this. We have density independent effects. These are effects that are independent of the population size, but still regulate growth. Most of these are aspects of the external environment, such as weather related events, such as droughts, storms, and floods or also physical disruptions, such as fire and road construction. In contrast to density-independent effects, we have something called density-dependent effects. These effects are dependent on the population size and act to regulate growth. These effects have an increasing effect on the popu as the population size increases. So the more people you have, the greater influence these effects may have. A way to increase population would be birth rates or immigration. A neutral change would be migration within an area. A way to decrease um, uh, population density dependent factors would be through death rates and emigration. So if you look at a graph here, just the picture here, we see um, the line A, line B, and line C. Which one of these curves shows the effect of density dependent factors? And which one of these curves shows density independent factor? Keeping in mind, our density independent ones are externally, such as they could be examples of droughts, storms, and floods. Density dependent could be birth rates, um, or death rates, immigration, or emigration. So the answers here, if you look at these graphs here, you're welcome to pause the video and take a guess yourself. Answers would be uh, density dependent would be B here, because we are limiting our population growth. And density independent factors could be like storms and floods and droughts and floods, so I could see a lot more variability that occurs. Uh, influence our population density. Remember, our carrying capacity is the um, maximum amount of individuals a particular environment can hold. But we want to maximize population productivity. If we're harvesting organisms, so this could be, for example, fish in the ocean, uh, the goal of harvesting organisms for commercial purposes is to maximize net productivity. This area here would be the maximum sustainable yield, uh, or optimum yield lies partially up the signal curve. So if we're looking at harvesting individuals, this would be the maximum area we'd want to harvest. This will allow the population to kind of bounce back and help regulate itself. We don't want to harvest it all the way down to here. We don't want it to go all the way up to the very maximum. It's kind of in the middle here. It's the maximum sustainable yield of a population. Um, to be the uh, area where we could be able to Harvest individuals, in this case could be example for fish, without hurting the total population that naturally exists.